All right. How are we doing out there? Hope uh, you're being able to keep up with all of the chemical pathways. I know it's tedious. Uh, if you're very sleepy, you, you're suffering from insomnia. Uh, maybe just read chapter nine. Start reading uh, glycolysis and, and then it'll put you to sleep right away. Right. But uh, let's continue with our discussion now on the Krebs cycle. So up to this point, uh, again, glycolysis has happened in the cytoplasm. Uh, we've generated our two ATPs. We've generated our two NADHs and our two pyruvates. Oxygen was available. So we start to enter into the mitochondria. We progress through pyruvate oxidation, where we then uh, generate two CO2s. Uh, we generate two acetyl-CoAs and two NADHs. Yeah? So acetyl coy is an important molecule because acetyl coy is now our key, it's our ticket to be able to enter into the Krebs cycle. Right? So without acetyl coy, we can't start our, our cycle here. So uh, we continue deep within the mitochondria in the mitochondrial matrix. Our starting reactant then becomes acetyl coy, and we're going to cycle through this and twice. Remember, we have two acetyl coa so what one acetyl coa a second acetyl coa cycles after both acetyl coas progress through that we're going to have then four carbon dioxides six nadh molecules uh two fadh new molecules and then two atps so a lot of stuff happens it's a busy pathway uh, a lot of work happens but we end up back where we started because again it is a cycle cycle cyclic type of of process here. So the cycle literally turns twice uh, for our two acetyl CoA molecules. It's busy, right? I'll go through the whole thing here. It's a lot of steps, a lot of steps. The best way that I can explain it, and I'm going to go back and explain that in a bit, um, the best way I can explain it is a molecular rearrangement pathway. The best way it's going to make sense to your mind, I think. Uh, I don't know if you're like this or you know people like this that they like to shift the room quite often. Uh, they move the furniture, they shift the furniture, the bed is here, now next time the bed is here, now next time the bed is here, and on. It ends up back uh, in a location where it was before. So a lot of movement, a lot of things. Sometimes things get broken as you're moving them. Um, it's just a lot of movement, basically. And, and and that's sort of what happens in this citric acid cycle. Remember, it's an elect uh, molecular rearrangement pathway. So I'll come back here. But so we start here with that first molecule, right? Which we're going to call citric acid. That's why they call this the citric acid cycle. So we start with one, two, three, four carbons here. Right? So if we go back. This this kind of makes sense of where we are. So glucose. Way back in glycolysis, we started with six carbons. Uh, we managed to break that in half. So now we're three and three. Uh, in uh, pyruvate oxidation, you break one, we break one. So now we have two and two. So we went from six carbons to three carbons to two carbons. This is strange because we go back now to one, two, three, four, five, six. That's strange. All that work, and then we're back to six carbons. So the two carbons from acetyl CoA connect with the four carbons from uh, oxaloacetate to give us now citrate or citric acid. Right? And then we're back to six. So we, we shift, we shift. If you notice here, uh, we're shifting uh, sort of molecules, moving things around. And oops, as we're moving furniture, sometimes things break or, or, or you take things apart and when you put them back, you're left over with pieces, you're left over with uh, screws and, and like, well, I don't know what this is we're supposed to do, right? So we break off carbon dioxide, released electrons, got picked up by NADH. So now we go from one, two, three, four, five, six to one, two, three, four, five carbon molecules. The same thing happens again. We break off another carbon dioxide. Uh, electrons were released, got picked up by NADH. Right? So one, two, three, and four carbons here. So we went from two carbons, acetyl-CoA, 
plus oxaloacetate to six to five. Now we're back to four. And this is an important step. Uh, in this reaction, we actually generate a molecule of ATP. It's a, uh, not by accident, but it's a very simplistic one-step reaction that generates an ATP molecule, right? And I'm going to come back to that step right now. Uh, but that's good. That's what we're trying. That's the whole point of all this chapter, trying to generate ATP. So it's not that efficient, but we did manage to make one here. Uh, we continue to shift and move and slide and, and, and move new position parts. And we're, we, we lose an electron here. It gets picked up not by NADH because we didn't really have a, a carbon broken off. Uh, we have a secondary, not as efficient transporter that we call FADH2. So if NADH is like, a, like an Uber, uh, FADH is like the city bus. And it kind of gets you kind of close, but you still got to walk away right, to, to get where you need to go. Um, and then we continue. I ran out of space here, but we're going to have another NADH uh, that ends up being produced. No more carbon dioxides are lost, uh, but we have an NADH that, that gets uh, reduced here. So in total, per one cycle, we have one, two, three NADHs, one, two carbon dioxides, one ATP, and one FADH2. But we know it doesn't cycle just once, it cycles twice because we have two acetyl coys. So uh, we have then that grand total of, we have the grand total of um, six NADHs, four CO2s, two ATPs, and two FADH2s. So what's the whole point of all this, right? The, the, the biggest benefit we got from this is electron carriers. Electron, we reduced electron carriers. We made, again, six and two of these here, right, per two cycles. Right? And that's sort of the goal we made. Yes, we made uh, ATP, but not very much. Right? We made more carriers than we made ATP. And this ATP was formed by an inefficient method that we know of as substrate level phosphorylation. That should mean something to you, substrate level phosphorylation. So substrate, you know we're talking about enzymes, right? Some sort of enzymatic process. Phosphorylation, the addition of a phosphate. So we're adding a phosphate to something here. So what is substrate level phosphorylation? It's, it's a one step reaction where we have a DP that's acting as a substrate. So there's actually two substrates here. So this PEP molecule is a substrate and then ADP acts as a substrate. So that phosphate is broken off this substrate and directly transferred to this ADP now to form ATP molecule. So uh, not a lot of work and goes like that in the real world. You don't work very hard where you don't get paid a lot, right? It's not, it's a very simple work, simple job and gives you only a very simplistic amount of ATP. But hey, it's ATP, it's, that's what we're after. So to kind of keep track of everything, now we're in the Krebs, in the matrix, deep in the mitochondria, uh, we generated some uh, six NADHs, they're not shown, but two FADH2s, two ATPs by substrate level phosphorylation, and then uh, four carbon dioxide garbage molecules there. And that's again the second subpathway of the, the, the sorry, cellular respiration. So we're now ready for our last one and be done with this mess here.